Let us try and polish our skills again about radiological features of a normal chest X-ray. First of all, a radiologist will confirm identification, name, age and sex of the patient. These patient details are provided on the film or on the reporting screen. In this example, of course, these identification details have been removed to keep patient's privacy. The details are matched with the details provided on the radiology request form to make sure that the report is provided on correct film and for correct patient. The radiologist will then read the history. This patient presented with the history of abdominal pain two weeks after surgery for appendicitis and the treating physician is suspecting a bowel perforation. Suspected pathology, if there was any, would be visible in this case as free air under diaphragms, which of course is not there. So this x-ray does not have any sign of uh, bowel perforation. There is a systematic approach and protocol to be followed and this way you make sure that you do not miss any area and thus do not miss any pathology. Some radiologists will follow their own routine and will step by step look at the lung parenchyma, trachea, mediastinum, bony rib cage, cardiac size, retrocardiac area, height of diaphragms, costophrenic angles, cardiodiaphragmatic angles, as well as a radiologist will also look for any avascular areas in lungs to see pneumothorax and will also look for any mass or consolidation. This is done by assessing symmetry of grayscales in both lungs and of course sub diaphragmatic areas are, are also assessed. Vascular pattern is also assessed. Lower lobe vessels in an erect PA view should be bigger than upper lobe vessels. Otherwise, patient may have cardiac problems. So the trachea is central in this example, but gray scales are however not symmetrical over both lungs. Left lung looks a bit darker in upper zone as compared to right lung. However, in this particular patient, this does not represent any pathology because patient is slightly rotated towards the left side as you can see the medial end of right clavicle which is visible here is projecting over the thoracic spine versus the medial end of left clavicle here is projected away from the thoracic spine. This patient is slightly rotated. Uh, towards the left hand side and if this is the case if patient is rotated either on left side or right side uh, you may see asymmetry of gray scales. Both lungs have good volume and are almost equal in size. Height of both diaphragms is at the level of 6th anterior rib or 9th posterior rib. Uh, if there is a good breathing effort, the lung will go a bit lower. So let us count the ribs. So this is first anterior rib, second posterior, and then second anterior, third posterior rib, and fourth anterior rib, fifth anterior rib, and sixth anterior rib. Count again. First anterior rib, second anterior rib, third, fourth, fifth here and sixth anterior rib and uh, it should match to ninth or tenth posterior rib. So this is first posterior rib, second posterior rib, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth and ninth posterior rib is fully visible. The, this suggests that a patient does not have any emphysematous lung disease. Both diaphragms are making a dome shape again to confirm previous suggestion. Lung parenchyma is visible in retrocardic area uh, to suggest that left lower lobe is not collapsed. All other lobes are normal as well. The heart size 
is roughly less than half of the thoracic diameter to suggest that there is no cardiomegaly. Radiologists have electronic tools to measure the cardiothoracic ratio which we unfortunately do not have. Vessels are bigger near hilum and are getting smaller and smaller towards the periphery. So the vessels are bigger here and they're getting smaller and smaller towards the periphery. Lower loop vessels are bigger in diameter as compared to upper loop vessels here. Left and right main bronchi. Let me show it to you once again. Let me zoom it. So right main bronchus and left main bronchus here. They put a mutual angle of less than 90 degree uh, at the bifurcation of trachea to suggest that there is no mass or enlarged subcanal lymph nodes. We have ruled out cardiomegaly already. Right heart border, outline of ascending aorta the arch of aorta is in the middle, descending aorta, and then thoracic aorta. So this is thoracic aorta, this fine line here is clearly visible. Uh, aortopulmonary window is clearly visible as well. And as I go spin, this is as I go spin, let me show it to you once again. So this is a zygos vein which lies at tracheobronchial angle and, and that's how it should be. The right pulmonary artery is below the right main bronchus versus left main pulmonary artery is above the left main bronchus. Now this is how pulmonary arteries should be and confirm that the position of hyla, both hyla is in normal position. So this turns out to be an absolutely normal x-ray. Now you can also tell that uh, this is a female patient because of the presence of um, both breast shadows here. Notice there's a subtle difference uh, in the densities of lower lungs. So this area looks darker. This area looks darker as compared to this area. This is because the breast absorb some of the radiation, decreasing the density of lung underneath the, the breast. X-ray has been used with permission and is courtesy of Dr. Alex McLennan from UK. Thank you very much and thank you to Dr. Alex McLennan. Thanks very much.